Hey you, it's Tony for emodels.co.uk. Welcome to part 11 of the Chieftain... Tackham. Mm. Hey you, it's Tony for emodels.co.uk. Welcome to part 11 of the 135th scale Tackham Chieftain Mark 10 build. I nearly forgot again then. It's third take so far. Brilliant. Um, in this episode, we shall continue building the tracks, and on this occasion, we will be building this side here. And as you'll see, it's an assembly line type thing. I literally went into music mode, which is why you're going to get. Uh, I did a voiceover. Me? I did a voiceover. So you get a voiceover for that, and I'll explain what I'm going through. And then we'll get around to putting some paint on the thing finally. Now, as you'll see, I chose to do a first layer in black, uh, I've lost it, I've lost it, I've put it away somewhere, in black primer, simply because it's a grey plastic and the grey primer I have, this stuff, is a very very similar colour to the grey plastic, so I lay down black first in a very very light mist coat so I can see what I'm doing before we go into the grey, but we'll get to that during the video. So sit back, relax, enjoy and... Okay, so what you just seen there is me figuring out which way around the tracks will go with that far side. And then, at this point, I've gone into music mode, so there's just all kinds of music playing in the background. And this is really, really therapeutic to do. It looks horrible, it looks a pain in the bum. But, honestly, once you get into it, the worst part is uh, getting all your d dubbing sorted out. So as you can see, I'm working in groups of, I think it's five links here. Gluing all those together. And then I'll glue those little subsections into one long strip. And after that, you get into like a, an assembly line frame of mind. I think this is sped up uh, six times. Normal speed. So it's a good couple of hours worth of work, uh, and I think I mentioned it in the last episode. Definitely take regular breaks, especially if you've got issues with the uh, your posture or your knees, you know things like that. If you get bad backs and things, definitely take regular breaks. Uh, at the moment, this is about ten minutes worth of work condensed down into a couple of minutes. So once you get into a rhythm, it does build up quite quickly. And then once that glue starts setting, it's, it's bizarre how it works. See, the glue doesn't set straight away, which gives you enough time, as you can see now, to start moulding it around the drive wheel. As you need to know, I would definitely recommend building two long sections at this point. As you can see, I'm going to struggle in a second or two. I try to get around that idler wheel. Uh, so I would definitely do two quite long lengths and then try and join them in the middle. Get round the your drive and idler wheels first and then join up in the centre. Because as you're about to see, I'm not quite getting the length right. At this part now, I want to come up and round. I'm not quite long enough to meet that uh, support wheel. Quite cool this, I'm doing a voiceover. I might start doing this now on a regular basis rather than having that annoying music over the top. So I can explain what I'm doing. There we go. So that's roughly quarters, yeah, 15 minutes worth of work and then we get into the tedious bit of adding all the trap pads. And again, the, the actual pros of taking them from the frames and denubbing them all. Just, yeah, that's the hardest part of it. This bit is my numbingly boring, but the actual construction of it, once you've done all this donkey work, I just wave my hands, you can't see that, can you? Uh, 
yeah, so it's just this bit. It's just mind numbing. I've tried to leave in as much of this as possible. That's me changing the music. Uh, at that point, it's like listening to the Goon Show. <laughs> but yeah, I've tried leaving in as much of this as possible, even though it's all sped up, so you get an idea of just how much graft there is involved. Let's say once you get this donkey work out of the way, it's not too bad after that. Yeah. There's a few. <laughs> So at this point, uh, that track has had a couple of hours in real life to dry a little bit. So all the glue set, so it's a little bit more stable when you start throwing it around. And you can handle it a little bit better. So I would definitely recommend, if you can, leave that track to dry overnight uh, before you start adding the pads. As you can see, once you've done your donkey work of de nubbing, it's actually quite uh, quite a fast process. I'm actually fascinated. I'm watching the the editing video at the moment, and I'm watching the the microphone levels on my uh, <laughs> on my recording software. That's my voice. I'm hoping you can't pick up his uh, the noisy nephew downstairs. He's coming out with some right stories, that noisy nephew. So and so did this at school, and so and so did that at school, and we got into trouble, and it wasn't even my fault, right? Yeah. And it's just, oh, the tales. It's brilliant. I keep trying to talk him into writing stuff down rather than saying it out loud. Get some stories written down. Nobody does that anymore. Everybody's vlogging. Nobody writes anymore. I need to get more writing done. I might do a book. Adventures of Helgun 3-5. Hmm. There you go. More donkey work. Ooh, I think I'm gonna sneeze. After a while of doing these as well, you tend to um walk pilot. And the next thing you know you've actually done them. But then you've got to stand up and your legs don't work and you've got the pins and needles in your feet and everything and it's Oh my word. That's not fun that bit. You get up and you're all jelly legged. So again, you can see when you once you get going, you get into a rhythm, and it'll go quite quickly. <coughs> Excuse me. He's not too bad. He's fine. There we go, another jump cut. So I've actually gone away and had something to eat and drink and things like that. I've had a good break. I would definitely, definitely, definitely recommend going to the loo first before you sit down and do this. Because as you get carried away and you say, yeah, I'll go in a minute. Yeah, I'll go in a minute. Yeah, I'll go in a minute. And you don't go. And then, oh my god, afterwards it's just murder. Absolute murder. I yeah, know, too much information. Why well, share these things? Yeah, why not? Why not? We 
Which side was this? Was this the hero side? I think it is the hero side. So this is going to be the plain and boring, as the kit recommends. Uh, side, so it's all nice and clean. It's going to be, yeah, box down a paint job. You find yourself doing that as well. Ooh, ooh, I've not got enough pads. There's not enough pads. Oh, deck of it. I hate when that happens. That's okay. I think when I was pointing at the other track, there was still needed some uh, pads on that one as well. I think. Yeah, I hate when that happens. You're most of the way through doing something like that and you realise you haven't got enough. And now we're finishing off the right side track. So yeah, there was uh, a few needed for that side as well. I can tell it's the right side track. Just at the top of the screen, if you have a look, you can see the dimples that I added with the Dremel type tool. Uh, so we can have a bit more detail in that track. Just to stop it being all plain and bum. Just left the realism. Just that tiny little bit. Last little bit of donkey work and then we're done. As you can see just to the left of the screen now we've got a lot more uh, track links left over. Uh, I don't think I ended up using those. There we go, almost done. Almost there. Almost there. And done. Let's get some paint on. Been waiting for this for ages. Ages and ages and ages. Right then. Available from emodels.co.uk, it's not the Sunrise version. Uh, go for the UMP or the uh, what was it? One shot primer for ammo for MIG. It's the exact same stuff, just on the different licenses. I actually got this one before UMP brought their version out. And once this runs out, I'll go on and get the UMP version from emodels.co.uk. Do my job, there we go. So apologies for that. Uh, I've not quite got round to it. Cause, yeah, I'm just getting flint. I've also got this stuff, I might as well not get any more yet. I've still got a fair amount in this. Right, I'm going to go black first with the primers. Let's give that another shake. It's just had a, a shake for about 20 minutes off camera. Only a few spots at the bottom for the time being. I'm using my trusty old I want a Revolution CR with a 0.35 needle, I think it is. For those of you that are interested in this kind of thing, let's make sure that's flowing properly. 20 psi, and as you can see, lovely flow pattern. You'll always hear people say, oh, no, 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 use a, a 0.5 needle. Yeah, 0.35, it's coming out perfectly fine. You've got 20 psi, as you've just seen. And I'm literally just going to give this a little mist coat. So I'm coming most of the way down for air. Like so, that's just bits of. Oh, I love. My needle's not all the way on. There we go. Get him. That's better. So I'm coming most of the way down for air with a dodgy trigger. Don't take this part apart, this section apart even. Uh, I've had this thing about 11 years now. I took that section apart by taking this whole gubbins out underneath. See if I show you that. Hang on. Like that, hose off. Get off, do it that way. Right. 
take that off. Underneath here, I can't quite show you now because I've got paint in the cup. Underneath here, you've got like this silly little red thing. Uh, I'll post a photo here, so I'll just pause a little bit and waffle a little bit so give you a chance to see that photo. Took that apart for some strange reason, I don't know why. Spring went ding across the room, never to be found ever again. I've rearranged his bedroom three times since, including taking the window out and putting new double glazing in. I did that. Um, yeah, never to be found. So it's got a clicky ballpoint pen type spring in there, so it doesn't quite react like it should do. Alright, I'm gonna twaddle. Right, let's get the paint going. I'm literally just going to miscoat this. So as you can see, the plastic's still showing through underneath. And this is literally, so I'm not going grey primer onto grey plastic. It's just to give me a visual clue. So it's hardly any air pressure coming out, apart from yeah, despite what you can hear. It's nice and gentle. So all she's doing is just darkening the plastic down a little bit for me. Just so I can see where I'm shooting onto. What's that about? The trigger's not quite reacting like it's supposed to. Possibly because I'm not cutting it out properly. This is very likely. Just cut the mud cut and... Let's get that quick clean, like so. No, I'm still having trouble. Enough. We're not actually battering the area. If you batter the area, well, I'll show you on the other side more than anything. Now, if you put the area, you'll get that kind of thing going on. We don't want that. I'm definitely having trouble with this needle. What? Sticking back. This is what happens if you don't clean out properly. Beforehand. You get this kind of thing going on. My needle's stuck. I don't need this, I'm on national TV. There we go. Alright. So, nice to miss me. If you do manage to do that kind of thing, just cut to air. Just push needle all the way forward. Cut to air only. You should be able to see that drying off now. Stay a fair distance away. I've still got paint coming out. Knock yeah, that up. Cut to air on just dry it off. Lovely. Right, let's cover in with this. So we're not covering the area.
just enough to give me a guide so I can see where, uh, where the grades want to go. Like so, lovely. Right. That should do us. So I can now see where the grey prime is going to go on top of that, which won't make sense right now, but it will do. So I'm just going to do that very quickly now with this noisy thing on. As you can imagine, from how noisy that is, you know, it's going to get very, very noisy now. Uh, so that's why you'll be seeing time lapse and some kind of music over the top. Right, so to clean this out, if I just come over here, you hear and see all kinds of weird and wonderful things in the forums. Oh, I use this and I use that and I use the other. X20A, with my cleaning brush. With my cleaning brush, there's my cleaning brush. X20A, into the pot, and there's about a million people's toes curling right now. I'm just gonna give that all a jushing around, like so. Zoomed in. There we go. Quick judge around like so. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get some blue kitchen roll type thing. Stick that in there, tip it upside down. I'm not going to blow that through at all. Because the dry paint on the edge of the cup will be make oh, in there somewhere, so all nicely soaked up. There's absolutely nothing on the bottom. Drop some more X20A in. You can see the gunk coming back straight away. That's paint in this area. Cover the nozzle. A little bit of a blowback. As you can see, it goes mucky as hell. Just going to draw the needle all the way back a tiny little bit. Very gently pressing down for air. If you do a full hit, it'll just spit out the cup. So very, very gently do that. And as you can see, my trigger's still sticking. Now I've been painting all day long. Uh, I've been doing quick colour changes like this in between. It does actually need an ultrasonic bath at this stage. Because I've been absolutely battering this today. And I've managed to get a full day in. As you can see, I've got a really lazy trigger. So I need to do a complete field strip and clean, which we'll take care of now. But, if I just push me all the way forward again, what we should find is, if I drop some more x 20 in, and do a blowback, shouldn't be too bad. No, no, make a liar of me. Why not blow that through? And then... I want a Neo thingy airbrush cleaner. No, it's not I want of yeah, that stuff. Who drops that in? I love this stuff. I love how frothy it goes. We're ready. Bubbles. 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 Lovely. What we should find is that should be quite clear. Oh, yep, drop that, why not? Right, so, if I feel strip this now. Shush, in fact, just push that needle forward first. Drop of X20A. It's probably too much. Cut my hose back up. Spray through, and you can see it's coming out nice and clear. Yeah, I know. All these concoctions. Yeah. A couple of rinses with X28, 
quick squirt of brush cleaning through. Job done. Like I say, I've been doing this most of the day now. I've actually managed to get a full day in. Which is lovely. So I'm going to put that in there, that in there. Get me thing. Undo. Front end, which is very, very mucky. Drop that in there. What you probably find now is this part of my needle's really dirty. So I'll slacken the collet off at the back. Push the needle forward. Yeah, there you go. That'll do it. Get the state of that. There's monkeys now. That's not coming off either. That's been on for most of the day. So it just shows you quick cleans in between colours, quick colour changes. A great in the short term, but if you're spraying all day long, you definitely need to have a look at that properly. Take needle out. Never draw the needle back through because otherwise you'll put um, you'll put paint into the little washer that's at the back of here. Don't want that. Get into all your working parts, then absolutely gunk everything up. I don't want that at all. I'll just take most of that off with X20A now. Yeah, most of that's off. Right, so I can drop that very carefully into there. Be gentle when you drop it into here. Hang on a sec. Oh, that's quite scary. It's quite scary. Apparently there's just been a, a bomb on a football team's bus. That was quite scary. Hopefully everybody's okay. I'm just going to take care of this and I'm going to find out what's going on. Why is the world so messed up? It's, mm, scary place. Right, drop that in there. We have a maximum and a minimum line which is down here somewhere. I'm going to fill most of that up with water first. Really good squirt of every cleaner. That's it. That's all we need. Fill the rest up with water. Back in a second. That's a pressure record, doesn't it? <laughs> Six minutes on. Hopefully, you can still hear me. Just keep your eye on that. See all the paint coming up. Oh, my ears are ringing now. Right, there's my uh, kitchen roll. So I'll drop that there. All the paint's come off that, lay, that little tip now. Just give that a quick wipe. All the paint's falling off that. Come ha. Lovely. Lovely, lovely. Let's get the main body off. And then, I don't know if you can make that little black spot out. And I can't zoom you in now because my, uh, my hand's wet. A little black spot just there. I should now just flick off. There we go. Lovely. So it all just loosens up nicely. Some of this has been on for quite a while and all. I know. I'm terrible. There you go. Just peels off. So your ultrasonic cleaner will get it all nice and loose for you. You can just give it a quick 
I think with your thumbnail, there you go, peels off nicely. Nicely, nicely, nicely. My god, that's future. <laughs> that's been on there for years. Uh, yeah, so it gives you an idea of you know, how long things can be on there for, and it still comes off. That's for a quick ultrasonic thing. You get the crown out. Get the crown out. Crown. Right. So, just off to the side, we've got a, a towel I can wipe my hands on. Like so. Right. That's been on for a while. Let's zoom you out. No, that's out. That's out. There we go. Also, if you get your needle the right way around, your needle guard thing. What's this called? This part. Yeah, I know. And then we tighten that up. Now, what you'll find is there's a little bit of resistance there. Stop. Don't go over tightening. Alright, so get your finger tight and then just nip it that last little bit. Literally, the second you feel it bite, stop. Otherwise you'll be in a whole world of hurt. Hold on. Yeah, I know, stop laughing. Triggers first. I do not do this. I'm literally trying to get my head around the camera to see what I'm doing. Should we do a selfie? Let's do a selfie. Let's do a selfie, show you what I'm dealing with. Put the camera that way around. I'm literally. Don't you make that out with the shine? Hang on. Let me. Uh... There we go. Show you the photo. Show you the photo. That's literally what I'm looking at. It's quite a. Uh... It's quite difficult to do. I've got to get my head around all the angles. So I can see what I'm doing. It's good fun. Should try it. Let's be needle, let's be needle. So, quick look at the needle. Yep, yeah, lovely and clean now. Nothing like what we had a moment ago. Just have trouble on the table, give it a quick wipe. Loosen the collar off at the back, and then very, very carefully push that home. Like so. Pull the needle back. First crown on, put the bell crown on, chop them. There you go, a lot more responsive now. Liking that. And I drop the thing on the floor. There you go. Great guard. Drop that there. Compressor back on. Let's give all that a wipe. Now, what you'll find. Once you've done this, as you can see, I've just literally thrown it all together. Don't go chucking paint into it straight away. Quick release back on. Just off camera then, I was there going. Yeah. Quick release back on. Silly bloke. What you'll find is, big spurt comes out. So don't go putting paint in it straight away. Just give it a few minutes. Blast everything through. Cover the needle again. Make sure there's nothing coming back in. And as you can see, it's a lot more responsive now. Lovely. Right. So we can crack on. Let's give me a few minutes to get rid of this, and I'll be back. All right. So if I bring in the upper, upper hole, upper hole. Just off camera, I'm going to chuck some more oh, black stainless res. UMP one shot primer thing into my airbrush just off camera like so. Quick squirt through just to make sure there's nothing else left over from the cleanage. Like so. Same deal. I'm gonna blast it all with air first, make sure there's no dust on there. And then very, very lightly, very gently, just mist coat. Oh, 
over the top like so. So we've still got the grey plastic showing through. We've still got a lot of uh, shine from the photo watch as well. So it's a good indication where the grey ends and you know, so if I go uh, with grey primer on that straight away I'm not going to be able to tell where it's going especially for you guys on camera as well Don't forget as well, under here, got a little bit heavier there. It's just going to be shadow areas anyway. But you can see the difference there between what we're doing on top. You know, give it a heavy blast and again, just cut forward, leave the trigger all the way forward, cut to air, dry that back. It's not a problem at all. And just in case any of that shows through. Side. Lovely. I'll forget the back of that driver's viewport. Like so, that should do us. That's ready for grey now. Let's cast that shadow there. I'm just going to drop that into the spray booth. Stop it. It's better. I've got enough in there, I should be able to get most of this turret done as well. And then there's a gazillion greeblies. Yeah. from the other side for that part. Take off your barrel. Stop it. Grip you. Well, you grip. Well, if I go all the way down there like so. Right, so. Quick blast of air. Just make sure there's no dust on there. Quite a snotty coat. Don't worry too much about this ring because that's where the um, it'll rub against the upper hole. And if you paint that, you'll get some bindage. 
no will. Bindage. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm going to leave that to dry for a couple of hours. What time have we got? Might even be overnight this now. I've got a few things to take care of. Uh, but what I'm going to do now is... Oh, I'm out. There we go. That'll do. Right, so I'm going to clean the airbrush out. And then walk away. I'm going to walk away. Clean the airbrush. Walk away for a bit. So I'm going to sit down most of the day at work. And stuff like that. I need to walk around. I might go for a jog around the block. Yeah, jog around the block. My charity run season's upon me now. I've got, to, I've got, really do need to start doing some training. I, uh, how do I put it? I did overindulge during the Christmas and post Christmas part. You know when everything's all miserable and horrible and dark and horrible and miserable outside. Yeah, that was a bit excessive. A little bit excessive. I mean, he's uh, not thanking me at all now for that. Yeah. He's fine. He's fine. Mm. Right, so I'm going to do what I need to do. And then you're going to get to see a lovely time lapse thing of me spraying everything else with that mist coat of black. And then we'll get the grey primer on. Get everything nicely covered, hopefully get us a nice even base to work from, and then we can start getting some proper colours on there. Yay! Why am I not leaving it black? Well, we've got uh, we've got a green to go on there, and if I use black as the main primer, comes that, uh, the green over the top of that will be too dark, so I'm going to need a grey primer at least to just lift the, the vibrancy, vibrancy of the green a little bit. Madness in the method.
to words at all whatsoever because this is a family friendly show but yeah I'm yapping away quite merrily to you and I've forgotten to press the little button just there on my screen that says make this go make it record <sighs> so I just have all that without you being with me you were there in spirit though that's me anyhow I've decided like we hadn't glued all this kind of thing together just yet uh, I did have a test one, I lost it I think it might be back in its box to get underneath that rim there in the central hub just there, it's a bit of a pain when you've got that big tyre in the way Comes that, it's a bit of a pain, you can't quite get to the angle so I'm glad I left that open uh, I'm glad I left that open, hopefully I can remember to warn you about that but, you know, when I do all the editing now then I now have the dilemma of trying to paint that green in there whilst leaving this rubber black of some description now I'm going to go with what uh, what the instructions tell me to use wherever that's gone rubber and tyres, there we go that's AMIG, AMIG 33, I've actually got that out that's bizarre uh, so I'm going to carry on with the grey primer coat over the top of these because as you can see the tyre edges are still plastic because it's quite... hello you've just been hit in the back of the head by a lamp yeah, I managed to get inside there done but I've got to try and hold this at the same time so I can now stick that on my finger and spin it around like so so I'm not glued these in either I've got to try and figure out how to do that so it's possible I might end up with a disc of plastic I can whack in there some description and then my little masking trick for the outside which will be uh, as soon as I can find that as soon as I can find that right one step at a time carry on priming right then some of that rubbish off on the side so that's at about an hour or so to dry it not quite an hour but it does dry quite quickly that, all of this stuff I really do wish I'd found this a lot sooner in my building career it's just about quite a while as you can still see there's um, a fair amount of photo etch still showing through so what we're going to do now is using the grey style res so I'll make sure I've got a nice flow screw that end cap so I can carry on cleaning my needle there we go I haven't quite got the fluff off the end of that then so what we'll do right what we'll do is a couple of really light mist coats right I've just been doing with black so make sure the falls going grey and then going completely back to grey now right the way back so a couple of light coats like I say Try and cover it all in one go. It'll look spotty as hell at first, but don't worry. So we still want to try and show some of that black through. So it's almost like pre shading, but it's not. See that then? So let's try and get some of 
full twitch again. What you find is it does dry quite fast, this stand rest. I can now give it a proper coat. Still not trying to smother it all in one go. Still quite a light mist coat, but it's a little bit heavier than I was doing with the, the previous two coats. You should be able to see the difference as it's going on now. Instead of wafting all over the place like I was doing earlier, I'm actually sitting to show you here. Just a little bit spitty that. I've got a blockage in my nozzle somewhere so I'll have a small blockage in here somewhere instead of a nice thin coat, instead of smacking everything down in one go like that which is just a, a gravy puddle as you can see building up the layer a little bit heavier each time I'm going, uh, going past Like make sure I've got no gold showing through still. There's a tiny little bit of rust there. A bit heavy there, and then come on this side here. too much about under there because like I say that's going to be a shadow anyway. As you can see now, it's all grey on grey. I can't quite see that. You can just about make it out of a play with the lighting but I don't really want to be you know, messing about doing all this stress if I've got it all. So, quick mist coat of black. And then you can go right way back to grey then. Oh, that's lovely, I like that. Good, right, crack on with the rest of it. And there we have it. Brilliant, we're painting. Brilliant, I love this bit. Right then, pull along, see my mates at emodels.co.uk, spend some money with them, say hi, tell them I sent you, they'll probably ask where the cheesecake is, tell them I ate it. 
the usual stuff. We've got Ted and Fox on the Monday night shows on the YouTubes. And they said Channel 4 then. <sighs> it's been a long day. Can I go home now? <laughs>